Welcome to a special live event celebrating Hallmark's brand new original series, Ride. I am Brienne Heldman. I'm the senior editor of TV at People Magazine, and I'm so thrilled to be here with this incredible group of actors. We have Sarah Garcia, who plays Valeria, Jake Foy, aka Tough McMurray, and Tyler Jacob Moore, who plays Gus. Welcome, everybody. Hi. Thanks for having us. Congratulations on this new show. It's so exciting. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Thanks. So we, we got to meet your characters a little bit in this first episode, but now as we're getting ready for episode two, tell what more can you tell me about each character? Because we really only got a small taste of these three characters. And Sarah, we'll start with you. Valeria is certainly a woman of mystery. Yes, she is a woman of mystery. Uh, she is... Wow. Um, she's a go-getter. She is resilient. She is brave. And um, she has a lot of loyalty and love in her heart for the McMurray family. And I can't wait for everyone to go on the journey with her and find out all the secrets. Mm, okay. Jake, tell us what you love about Tough. Oh, man. There's a lot to love. I mean, what excited me most is I come from a music theater background and I grew up watching family entertainment with my grandparents and my cousins. And there are always three generations watching things in our household. So to get to be part of a family story that's rooted in love and get to sing and work with this amazing cast and crew, I'm still, I'm still pinching myself. <laughs> and a little bit about Tough, I guess if you need to know, he's the... Um, ranch foreman when we start at the top of the show. He's also the front man of the local band, uh, uh, as well as the family bullfighter in that rodeo dynasty we call the McMurray family. <laughs> it, it, he, he wears a lot of hats, but they're all quite large. Yeah, they're big hats. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, yeah. tell us a little bit more about Gus. I feel like we only got just a little taste in episode one. Yeah, you're going to get a little more of a taste in episode two. Uh, you just get a little a little sampling of Gus. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a wealthy stranger who's coming into this uh, whole uh, ranch and, and small town community and family. And uh, they don't know much about him. And he kind of falls in love uh, with this uh, community and possibly with Missy. Uh, <laughs> so I think... <laughs> Maybe. You, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's a spoiler. I don't think that's. I think it's all over his face every scene, so I think that's easy. Uh, so yeah, I think I think we'll get to see you get to see more of him, and you get to see maybe what uh, what happens uh, with that uh, relationship, and then how he interacts with the family, uh, especially uh, coming up very shortly. So uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. You have to stay tuned. All right. Well, there's a big death in episode one, which was actually mm -hmm. kind of very Game of Thrones of the show. Uh, Jake and Sarah, tell me a little bit about, because we, we had then had this one year time jump, so we didn't really get to see them in mourning or how they handled the death. Tell us a little bit about how they dealt with the death and where they're at now in episode two. Yeah. yeah. This is the second loss that Tuff would have suffered, um, but the first would be secondhand. Uh, Dusty, our father figure, um, and the patriarch of the McMurray family is gone before I come into the world. And so he's the dad that I never got to know. And then from that, the relationship that Tuff has with Austin is really rooted in rodeo together. Um, but off the top, he stepped into this role of feeling that he needs to look after his mother and with his brother, newly his brother Cash, newly returned to the family, what that's going to look like for protecting them as well. So a lot is shifting roles and responsibilities are changing hands, as you know, and the uh, struggle to find that new balance is what we get to watch unfold over the rest of season one. Mm -hmm. um... and, uh, Valeria she kind of disappears into the night. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course she's going to be returning. Uh, <laughs> but how does she handle that? I, can you share how she even learns the news that he dies? Um, for Valeria, I don't think loss is something new for her as well. She mm -hmm. came to the McMurray's 
as a teenager and Isabel took her in and treated her like one of the family. She grew up with the McMurray boys. And so she's almost an adopted daughter. Um, leaving under the mysterious circumstances and coming back, Valeria is just dealing with a lot of complicated, intense feelings. She's trying to regain the trust of the McMurrays. She's trying to regain Tuff's trust uh, in the following scenes. You see a lot of their dynamic um, when we when we go to the farm. And um, she's just, I think she's trying to find her way the best that she is, she knows how. She She's just trying to be as truthful as she can without causing further harm to the family. All right. Um, and Tyler, I mean, Gus kind of immediately seems very fascinated by this family, not just, not just Missy. Uh, <laughs> what is, what is the appeal for him of this family and, and kind of the desire to maybe get in there? Yeah, I, I think his, <laughs> he comes from a world of, of, of his desire. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> you can say nice. that Valeria wants to get in there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody right. wants into the McMurray family. Janine's elbowing her way into the magic oh, there. Boy. I think it's That's those really good. yummy looking breakfasts that are made every day. Hey, right? and they are. I mean, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, 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 I've watched a couple those... episodes now. Those breakfasts, they don't go downhill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. By, the, by the end, they're just full spreads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turkey dinners, every every meal, every dinner, the family gets together. As we save yeah. the ranch, we hire a caterer, yeah. <laughs> Not only do we save the ranch, we've done quite well. The ranch is doing quite well. Oh, my. <laughs> no, I, I think, uh, uh, yeah, my character comes in, uh, into this world uh, and is immediately, uh, yeah, not just obviously smitten with uh, Missy, but, but also the entire uh family um the the vibe maybe not so much cash but no they just in general they they, it, they show such love and affection for each other and gus lives in a world where everyone's very busy and don't have time for each other the family you know they it's just not uh as i don't want to say loving it's just different you know it, it's it's time is money and so they treat time differently and to come into a community in a small town in a rural uh, setting where people value time with family over time for their own careers or their own ambitions or, you know, uh, other things. And I think he really uh, is drawn to that and that appeals to him and, and sees that and wants that and wants a simple life and, and prefers that that style of life of focusing on uh, family and focusing on, you know, the, the relationships that you have more than your own individual uh, wants and needs. Mm, interesting. Sarah and Jake, Valeria and Tuff were once like brother and sister, but I feel like as we are getting to know them, they seem quite at odds. What can you say about kind of creating that dynamic and how it might evolve? Well, Speaking of creators, our uh, show creators, Rebecca Boss and Chris Macy, were integral in helping Sarah and I to understand the backstory of these characters, some of the secrets and mysteries and truths, unknown truths that exist beneath the surface of season one that we've yet to reveal about what we might have gone through together and then what might happen when we fell apart. So um, it, it's been a learning process for us as well to get to know these characters in greater depth beyond what's even on the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that there are a lot of scenes that Jake and I are in where we have a lot of fun with the banter. I mean, <laughs> we have a brother and sister relationship on screen that I think is very true. I, mean, I have a younger brother and I think it's very true to even my sibling dynamic uh, and a beautiful blossoming friendship off screen. And I think that that sort of plays uh, in the honesty of our performance. I hope it shines through. Well, that is the perfect segue to my next question, which is what was your first reaction when you finally got, got to meet each other? And what have those dynamics been like off screen? Jake, do you remember our first yes. scene? 
Yeah. Well, wait, the first scenes or when we actually met each other person to person? The first scene we did. Oh, yeah. Sarah and I. Oh, we left. What was it? <laughs> well, how Tell us. I want to know. I don't know. That. Well, I don't want to review. It, it does involve sheep. I think we're waiting. Oh. We're still waiting for episode two. We sh we block shoot the show, actually, this yeah. might be these people. So we do two episodes at a time in five blocks for 10 episodes. So we actually began with more of the season two rapport after tough episode two. Oh, well, yeah, me, me manifesting. <laughs> we manifested season yeah, yeah, yeah. two. <laughs> no, the episode two, the episode two dynamic has uh, tough and Valeria uh, at odds but in cahoots in, in a perfect way and Sarah and I were getting to know each other yeah. for the first time as Tuff and Valeria get to know each other anew after yeah. Valeria's absence so art imitating life in that category yeah definitely <laughs> well Sarah I will say it's a, that's a great scene I know exactly what scene you're talking about people okay. are in for a treat it's not bad yeah. <laughs> that's so good <laughs> Ridiculous. Perfect. You're hired. <laughs> You're hired. Yeah. Sarah and I met, I think, uh, dancing. Yeah, Tyler and I met time? in a two-stepping oh, class. Yeah, yeah. We had we have a scene in the in the first uh, episode where we dance, and so they were uh, hallmark, and everybody was kind enough to provide some lessons for us. So our the first time I met uh, Sarah and Tierra and Bo were all at dance lessons. So yeah. it was really fun. Right. I was not. He charmed uh, the socks off of all of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah, everybody, it was it was pretty immediate uh, that everybody got along and, and genuinely, genuinely enjoyed each other's company. So it was uh, very, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're really awesome. nice. We're really lucky uh, to be on location in Calgary, Alberta, Canada for the show. So I think it also offered an environment where everybody was, th that's not anybody's home Right. State or a hometown. So we were all uprooted to shoot the show and had to find, right. you know, new bonds away from the familiar. And in that way, we were able to hit the ground running because we really didn't yeah. have our normal infrastructure around us at all. But it ended up being kind of the perfect setting to uh, get to know one another the way that we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was perfect. It did work out perfectly that way where we were for, being on location. We sort of had to uh, spend time together and, and thank goodness because, yeah, we genuinely enjoy each other's company. I can only speak for myself. I genuinely enjoy uh, everyone's company. <laughs> I enjoy your all, company too. Yeah. We put up with Tyler. That That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so while they were taking their dance lessons, Jake, were you working on the guitar and singing? Yeah, I uh, have sang, sung, I don't know, the past tense of that verb, but uh, I've sang <laughs> since college. Uh, like I say, I went to music theater school, but guitar was entirely new. And I, um, I draw and paint as well. I have really good motor function in my right hand. And that strumming hand was meeting an instrument for the first time, that's for sure. <laughs> but um, we're very lucky, obviously, to have a crew and for me to have a guitar coach that made all that possible. So yeah, full time in lessons. And then what you hear on screen is all my singing and my voice, but we do pre-record and then have playback on set. So that's how those magic musical moments happen. So you get to work on those songs a little longer than uh, than just jumping up there. Yeah, more time is always better, but yeah. <laughs> get a little... Not that much time though. I, I know that the turnaround on those sorts of things can be actually pretty quick. Yes, it can. Yeah. <laughs> It can and was. <laughs> well, Didn't say of, that. Didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the training, uh, how much had you been on a horse before this show? Uh, me? I've been around well, horses early. We all have different yeah. backs. <laughs> Tyler, you go. <laughs> you. Yeah, I, I, I'd been on horses earlier uh, as, as a kid and growing up. I grew up in a rural area, so I was familiar and had the ability, but you know, in my career of, you know, acting and living in Los Angeles, uh, wasn't exactly opportune moments to go horseback riding anywhere, you know, no neighbors had a horse I could jump on. So <laughs> it, uh, I was very grateful for the Wranglers and the training uh, that the show provided to sort of remember and get back in the saddle. Nice. Not really nice. a pun. But you did it. You found it. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not the only one with the dad jokes. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> um, I, I didn't have any experience with horses at all. And I specifically remember the audition 
asking if the, the actors did have experience or um, if they were afraid of horses or if they were allergic. And I was just like, I'm not experienced. I'm fine. Sure. And uh, no, I didn't. So, so I ended up actually doing a, an equine therapy session where I got to learn all about horse energy and um, meet a horse and just hang out in a, in a pen for, for an hour with them. And, and I learned a lot about the body language and how empathetic they are. And I brought that with me to my first lesson. And I think it helped. Um, it definitely made me feel more comf comfortable and confident. And then we just had the most incredible wranglers and teachers uh, helping us through. I mean, Jake was a natural. I remember his first day. He was just up there riding away. <laughs> too sweet. Too sweet. I, had, I think I had waited to... Uh, my my whole life to ride horses. I had always wanted to, and I grew up in Niagara in on the Canadian side in a pretty suburban environment. Ranching was not a real thing for me, but to speak to Sarah's point, Sarah and I, uh, and, and Tyler as well, um, we had trainers that are decorated riders in the Canadian rodeo and ranch circuit. So um, we were in excellent hands from day one. I was just a little more excited than most to get back on the horse, but for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to out dad joke each nope, other. That's I, like I like it. I like it. I like it. I just hope you're all enjoying the ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap. That's it. Yeah. Did it. <laughs> well, the ranch itself is so gorgeous and it, it feels really sprawling and, and it's really special. I imagine that set itself is pretty special. What was your reaction when you first saw it? Take you go first. <laughs> Me? Yeah. I mean, I, growing up Canadian and then having this wonderful opportunity to be on a show that reaches a wider audience, I, I, I was amazed that we were shooting where we were and we shoot everything practically. So we talk about it like your soundstage is the Rockies or your set. It, it feels like you're in a dream when mm -hmm. when you arrive there and they had the hallmark executives had worked extensively to scour for the most beautiful location that they could find and it's breathtaking and we still feel that way when we return there there's a magic to mcmurray ranch which i think is it's called bar and in real in not real life but um it's sweeping and every new day that the seasons are changing it, it's a vista so what is one of the beautiful things about the show in my view is that you get to watch us go through four seasons of change in this canyon valley and uh by the finale we're in this snowscape that feels like a winter wonderland it, it's magnificent that that's a long-winded speech but it, it's still not doing justice <laughs> you came close though that was yeah yeah, yeah. you did a really All great that. job <laughs> now i'm getting excited for the finale and we're only about to see episode two <laughs> yeah stay tuned great <laughs> when gets sarah sarah what was your thought when you first saw it i just felt this incredible sense of coming home. Um, I grew up in a city and never really been around farms or, or ranches. Um, I didn't know that I was going to fall in love the way that I did. And now I, I, I can't wait to have my own one day. I, I, it's, it's, it's truly awe inspiring. It's a, it's a humbling thing when you stand out on the foothills of the Rockies um, with the animals on set. There was a, a cult that had just been born that was just roaming free on the ranch. Yeah. Wasn't necessarily part of our show, but it was just this beautiful magic of life that we got to witness every single day and be a part mm -hmm. of. And we got to see him grow. And I'm sure when we get a season two, we'll, <laughs> he'll be a, a fully grown horse and that's wild to me <laughs> yeah I, I totally forgot about that cool yeah that would have what an it's amazing so beautiful. beautiful thing and it would it would just be roaming free and we'd be on you know in the middle of a scene and we're if we're shooting in the ranch land like the horses are just roaming yeah. so they would just come up to camera so you'd just be you'd have to like stop and then you know you'd have to have somebody crew come and like shoot them yeah. away because they just 
they're, yeah. they're interested. They're like, what's going on? Let's they, they every, every chance the crew took opportunity they took, we'd be like, Where's this person? Oh, they're hanging out with the cult. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. Snow people. angels, snow angels with the cult. Yeah. yeah that was <laughs> Magic. Well, Nancy Travis is obviously, you know, the matriarch of this family. And I'm just curious, you know, she's been She's done so many things. I mean, however, almost 200 episodes, I think, of Last Man Standing and all of these other shows right. and movies. Uh, is she in some ways like the matriarch of the of the cast? Is she giving you guys advice? <laughs> oh, yes. Sarah, I feel like you have a good answer. Let's hear yeah. it. <laughs> but she's just a powerhouse. I mean, she. I think we all feel that she is our set mama and we we've learned i personally have learned so much from her she's she's an incredible talent an incredible person uh i actually remember when we first when i first met her nancy and tara and i went for a hike in the calgary mountains and we started off on this one trail and sort of lost our way on the trail and yeah. ended up kicking off our boots and like <laughs> trudging through ice cold streams. And we um, found ourselves at the helm of this incredible ice blue lake. And, and that's really like how we bonded uh, as these three women who are in family together on the show, but it, we're also in family together in real life. And, and I just, it's just a story of how adventurous and how fun and, and vibrant Nancy is. She's just really game and ready for anything. It's been a joy working with her. We joke that we get, we get tongue tied whenever we're asked to talk <laughs> yeah. about Nancy because they're, they're, <laughs> they're infinite praises to sing. They're really, really are. And it's so meaningful to not only have an opportunity to tell a story you care about, but then to have a mentorship built into that infrastructure and, and for her to care so much about our art form you know when nancy comes off of these en enormously impactful contracts that reach audiences of millions then she wants to go do a small show for an, a, an indie audience do a live play like she just really lives and breathes the the work that we do and to play opposite her or to be one of her tv kids i mean look at look at the kids that go on to succeed from being Nancy <laughs> Travis's TV kin. It's a very lucky spot to be in for, for me. Well, in particular. <laughs> they yeah. do. Yeah. Well, they, they do. They learn, they learn from her way, which yeah. is just to treat everyone with such a dignity for their work from, from yeah. the camera team to the crew, to the, to the servers. When we go out, to dinner as a family in town on, on on days off it's 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 a real lesson in yeah. in how to be yeah she's she's all she's all the things you know it's not enough that she's for hours about and, her and <laughs> yeah and, you know this is just a fan and, yeah yeah <laughs> great actress and all these things she's also incredibly funny and it's just oh. yeah she's the quickest wit you know and oh, in, in anything texting in life she's just so uh, yeah she's all the things oh well, I want to hear more about these dinners. Like, Tyler, do you get invited? You're not technically a McDonald's. No, no, no. I'm not in the family. They, they put me in the <laughs> corner and they, they invite me but say I got to sit in the corner and eat by myself. Yeah. And, uh, you know. No eggs and bacon. He always you. gets up to leave right before <laughs> yeah. the rest of us are done. Just <laughs> right. So we can keep that dynamic alive. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. They're all, they're all method actors. So they just treat me awful. <laughs> just awful. Just Don't give life. us ideas, Tyler. We'll yeah. run. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, yeah, no, he's yeah. Invited to the dinners. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, thank goodness that yeah that no nobody is uh, method acting when it comes to friendship and genuine you know when we're offset and I would say it, it's hard for me sometimes to be antagonistic you know especially with Bo's character because you know these guys I mean. It, but all of them, you know, it is like we sort of they don't know me and I'm coming into their world. And, they, you know, am I coming to, you know, buy their land from them? Am I coming to, you know, to be this? We don't know. You know, you have to have to tune in and find out. But <laughs> but I think that, it, it, yeah, like it is sometimes it was hard to have an antagonistic uh, attitude with them because they're also likable in, in real life. And, you know, between action and cut, it was nothing but a love fest and genuine 
you know, joy of working together and, and having so much fun. So it was, yeah, it could be challenging at times or, you know, acting wise, you sort of had to separate and get into acting mode and go, okay, you know, this is the character. These are the, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I've, I've got a, a kind of a two part question for each of you. Um, first of all, like, what does it mean to you to be joining the Hallmark family and part of a network that has such a passionate fan base and because they have such a passionate fan base, I'd also love for you to give them each one little, one, one little fun fact about yourself that they can hang their cowboy hats on. Um, oh. So <laughs> who wants Sarah, to go first? Sarah, you're up. Oh, I'm <laughs> Ladies up first. first. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I am just incredibly grateful for this opportunity, for this experience. I have always wanted to be a part of a set family and I got that tenfold with this project. It, it's, it's been incredible. It's the, there's so much love, there's so much mm, positivity and I, I'm, I'm very excited with the new content, with the way home and with ride. I, I'm just so excited for this new wave and what it's going to bring to the Hallmark community. Uh, and what is the second part? A fun a little fact. personal it's detail. A fun fact I'm glad this happened, this happened to me earlier today. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so glad we get to Tough and Valeria get to be back on level three. <laughs> um, a personal. I. <laughs> Wait, why don't we do the first part, all three? Okay, and then we'll go ahead. Yeah, three. you yeah. can think about and it. You go, Jake can answer his excitement about how. I think, I think what's so exciting is obviously there are attributes that belong to Tough that are going to be new for some of Hallmark's audience. But at the end of the day, it is thrilling to be on a network that prides itself on telling love stories of varying kinds and that was the selling point that made me want to come on board i wanted to be part of a set family like sarah says but also to tell a story about overcoming our differences especially after these past three years about seeing each other's humanity and then coming to the table and in real time on real terms and bridging those gaps and that's exactly what the mcmurray's are doing and i think a lot of americans audiences around the world are trying to do that right now and find their common ground again. And if we can do a little bit of that with this show, then, then job well done to, to everyone. <laughs> oh, Jake, as a Hallmark fan, you give me chills with that answer. Oh, yeah. Good luck, yeah seriously. I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan of the show. I just happen to work here. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It is not it's not work promoting something that you genuinely enjoy and, and think is good and are proud of and and uh, I think for me coming to Hallmark, I was I'm consistently shocked at how uh, their brand of love and hope and positivity and what they're trying to put into the world, you know, through the entertainment bleeds uh, through and through in their executives in you know, top down in the crews, in the cast, mm -hmm. in in the people, you know, just meeting everybody in, you know, behind the scenes at Hallmark they it there it is different there's something different about uh the network and, and about this uh company in general so it's kind of fun for me you know having done you know a lot of other stuff and then come to a to a place where what they're promoting is actually you know they're practicing what they preach they uh, behind it. the scenes mm -hmm. yeah they are we you know, leading with love yeah. and our kind and yeah they're 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 really lovely people on the inside you know in real life so it's uh, it, that's thrilling. So it's to, to be able, I mean, all I want to do is entertain people. And if we can also put some positivity and some light and hope into the world while entertaining people who are working their butts off every day, working in ranches, working, you know, nine to five jobs, more like 12 hour a day jobs, you know, multiple jobs, you know, working so hard, uh, to provide the least we can do is work hard for them and, and try to make the best entertainment possible. And I'm, I'm really grateful that everybody involved in this show 
whatever, you know, whatever anybody thinks, you can't deny that every person was working as hard as they could to provide entertainment for those people who are working so hard. And they've only got a couple hours, you know, on a weekend to relax and enjoy time. So mm -hmm. we, we owe it to them to do our best and work as hard as we can and give them the best stories, the most interesting characters, you know, and, and I, you know, I don't mean to toot our, our own horn here, but I think <laughs> we did that. So. Nice. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> All right, before we wrap up, I do want those fun facts, and then we're going to do a quick fire. You're going to give a little tease about what's to come in episode two, but first the fun facts. So, Sarah, you're up now. You've had some time to think about it. I was just so <laughs> enthralled by both of their answers. I didn't really <laughs> think about it. Um, Can you play okay. an instrument? Okay, well, I – fun fact. Um, I do sing a little, so – I don't know, but maybe there's a season two thing where Val and Tuff have a little duet. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just I'm throwing that out there. I do more. I do more than game. <laughs> yeah, she's being she's being modest. She really is a great singer, and I think she like has an album coming. Like she's legitimate. She has a whole band. Like she's amazing. I don't have an album coming. Well, I think. <laughs> We might. We should have an album more, coming. I think we have soundtracks yeah. coming for for fans. Okay. Like we might there you some, go. Some streamable music selects and the, the music on the show. Save my covers. The soundtrack to the show is fantastic. It is so, fantastic. Beautiful. It's so good. If you enjoyed the soundtrack in the first episode, it doesn't go downhill. It's so. No. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Jake. Fun fact. Yeah, a little fact about me is I also uh, work as a writer and director, and I recently uh, produced, wrote, and directed a 40-minute musical short film uh, called More Together that's currently on the festival submission circuit. So hopefully you'll be able to stay tuned and watch a bit of that. And there's a five-minute musical short called Before They Were Then that you can watch on YouTube anytime if you choose. Amazing. Maybe you'll get to direct it's an episode in season two. We'll see. There's a lot. There's a lot to do without directing, but that's a <laughs> that's a flattering thought to have voiced. Yeah, yeah. Go check out his YouTube. It's it's beautiful. He's everybody in the cast is so wildly talented at so many things. It's like shocking every time you turn your head. They're doing something, and you're like, oh, I didn't know. I didn't know Bo could you know play guitar and sing. He can, and he's yeah. great at it. Mm -hmm. And and harmonica, he's great at that too. And maybe, you know, and, and McMurray Jake, Music Festival. <laughs> yes, yeah, they could be the Von Trops. You know, so you just have the <laughs> McMurray traveling, escaping the bookers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah right. We got to pay the bills. I know. <laughs> oh my! A traveling music show. Uh, I I don't know. Nobody wants Fun to know. Any you, Tyler. I don't know. Um, I think the only thing that's in. Well, I don't know. Um, I uh, I'm I'm a veteran of a foreign war. That's interesting. That's very interesting. That's well. What thank I, you for your service. Yeah, you're, you're well, welcome. I will, I will spread that. I, it's always awkward to take that. I you know I try to take it and go. Okay, I will I will pass that on to the guys in my platoon and people so they know that uh, you appreciate them and all of us. So I will I will pass that on. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, I'm gonna go Jake first on your little tease for episode two. Oh man, tease for episode two. Um, the plot thickens for Tough and Valeria, and we get a little window into what I think is one of the coolest parts about the show, the, the modern angle on rodeo culture and the world of influence and social media and how those things integrate for Missy and the implications they have for the McMurray's as a business, all that stuff begins to build and unravel at the same time. So you have to tune in to find out how. Okay. Sarah. I mean, I can't follow that. That's it. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> you, I can say tune, tune in. You just tune, say, in, tune just in. Just watch it. It's yes. so. Oh, yeah. You it's might get to see some interaction. Uh, Gus might get to interact with the whole family. So, oh, yeah. Is, oh, is yeah. Gus going to maybe interact with some animals this time? Yeah. 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 You might get to see my favorite uh, ranch chore uh, next episode. Aww. You'll see what that is. And uh, yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. 
Everyone be sure to tune in to Ride. The next episode is Sunday at 9 p.m. on the Hallmark Channel. And you can tweet along with the hashtag Hallmark Ride. Bye.